Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is another edition of Fresh Red Kills. So Fresh Red Kills is where I talk about the books that I have recently read, and I've got two quick ones here to discuss, uh, and they both have to deal with horror. Uh, first we're going to be talking about the you know, graphic novel, I guess you could say, Lon Chaney Speaks, and then the novella, Come Forth in Thaw. Uh, so at the end of April, I read this one here, uh, Lon Chaney Speaks, by Pat Dorian, who is a cartoonist. And this is really something of, it's a, a cartoon biography of the famous horror silent film actor, Lon Chaney. Um, I say horror film actor, they didn't call them horror films back in the 19-teens and 20s, the 1920s when he was doing his work, but uh, today we can safely consider them within the, the horror realm. Um, and he was a pioneer in many, many ways. Um, he was born to parents who were both deaf. Uh, so from a very early age, he learned how to communicate basically, you know, physically with body language and everything else with his parents. Uh, he knew how to work his body. Um, he ended up going into vaudeville for a while. Uh, but then of course he enters the movie industry. Uh, his big first breakout role, I believe was the penalty, uh, where he plays Blizzard, um, a crime boss who is also an amputee who had uh, both of his legs, at least from the knees below, amputated accidentally when he was a young boy uh, by a doctor, and then there was a cover-up about it. Um, and uh, the movie itself is okay. The ending is pretty kind of saccharine um, and not very good, uh, but it is worth it just to see Cheney in that role. Um, the way he moves, um, his legs are essentially tucked into these um, leather buckets uh, to make it look like he was an amputee. But, you know, he would get around by climbing up pegs on walls. And But he does so as as somebody who had done it their whole life, uh, not somebody who was just basically recently trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Um, it's His role is still convincing, uh, even after 101, 102 years now, because that came out in uh, 1920. And that was, I think, his real big breakout role. And then, of course, you go on to uh, star as Quasimodo and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, a, a movie that he really pushed forward and wanted to make, an incredibly expensive movie by Universal uh, at the time. Um, some people will put that in the canon of Universal Monsters. Uh, it's difficult to say exactly, um, but his makeup work in that was extraordinary. He did all of his own makeup work, so the hunch, the putty, all, everything on his face, uh, that was all him. There was no, there were no makeup artists for that. And that also goes for the next film that he did. Um, so Hunchback is 1923. I think 1925 is uh, Phantom of the Opera. And his famous kind of skeletal makeup uh, where, you know, he's got his nose all pushed back and everything. There's that wonderful reveal when he's unmasked. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, that was, that was all him. Um, and he also did quite a few films with Todd Browning. Um, where he often played, uh, again, what's it, amputees or fake amputees or uh, people who were often criminals. And one of the hallmarks, I think, of Lon Chaney especially was he created these monsters, but he gave us, a, he gave us some sympathy for them. Um, they were not just monsters generally for no reason. Uh, sometimes they weren't monsters at all. Um, but he helped us to understand and in some ways love these monsters. Now, unfortunately, he does, he did end up getting sick, and he died uh, right as talkies were coming about. He did one talkie, um, which was a remake of The Unholy Three, and um, then he unfortunately passed away, but of course his son, Creighton, would be known as Lon Chaney Jr., um, it would be uh, Larry Talbot, the Wolfman, um, and who would go on for his own long career, not always not always having the best roles, but uh, he's definitely made a living for a long time uh, playing monsters uh, and under his father's name. So what Pat Doreen has done is create a cartoonist version of, um, of his life, of Cheney's life, which is not easy to do. Uh, Cheney was somebody who famously did not give many interviews at all, uh, didn't really talk to the public at all. Sometimes it's difficult to tell what's real and what is um, studio publicity, especially with the trials and uh, the injuries that Cheney sustained to try and create his art. 
Um, but I think that Dorian does an admirable job. Um, sometimes he recounts the movies in cartoon form that Cheney did. Sometimes it's all about Cheney's life. Um, and sometimes he even like creates movie posters in different areas. Uh, and this is fine. Um, as somebody who had already known stuff about Cheney, was there anything new in here for me? There wasn't. Um, this was a nice cartoonist love letter. Uh, it took me, yeah, maybe about a little, little over an hour, maybe just to to read. Um, I mostly read it. My my daughter was taking gymnastics, so I sat down and was reading this while she was, you know, uh, with her class doing gymnastics stuff. Um, and you know, you can get through it very quickly. I will say that, you know, I, it's it's kind of a love letter to the actor. Um, it does feel in many ways that it's kind of uh, for younger readers. Like you could easily give this to a middle schooler who wanted to learn a little bit of film history and they they would be able to read this no problem. Um, maybe even a little bit younger. Uh, so it feels in a lot of ways, you know, like I say, he's, he's a cartoonist. It feels like it's a little bit cartoony. So that's not necessarily a criticism. It's just trying to kind of figure out where the where exactly the target audience is. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would recommend this only to people who really want to see a, a cartoon version of it, which I think that he's, yeah, a cartoon version of, uh, Cheney's life, which I think, like I said, Pat Dorian's done a perfectly fine job, uh, with it. Um, and I liked it. I'll definitely keep it, you know, when my son is older, I'll, I'll pass it on to him so he can learn more about Lon Chaney. He's, he's a monster kid too, just like me. Uh, we both love, uh, the, this genre. Um, but, you know, I'm glad I read it. I, I got this really cheap off of, uh, Hamilton books. Uh, I'm glad I'll pick it up. It's, it's a nice little, nice little copy, but again, it does feel like it's, it's more for younger readers. And then, uh, May started, and we've got a booktube event going on, um, uh, begun by the Bookish Bryants, and that is, um, Horror Mayhem, uh, reading horror throughout the month of May, and in particular, shorter works of horror. Um, I guess that's the emphasis. There are weekly prompts, um, themes, basically, per week. I'm not paying that much attention to that, necessarily, but I am taking the opportunity to read more horror in May. And I started off May with this one, uh, a novella self-published, um, Come Forth and Thaw, by uh, Jason Robert uh, Ducarmi. I hope you, I'm not butchering uh, his last name. And this is, I mean, first of all, I, I do like the the title that um that cover art is incredibly provocative uh really draws the eye and the whole idea of it really intrigued me um it was i guess inspired by the suicide forest in japan and now he says in here you know that that suicide forest was really kind of exploited uh in the west for horror entertainment in ways that were not very sensitive to uh you know, to mental illness and the things that draw people there. It was really just, you know, used as a gimmick in a lot of ways. And he wanted to create something that would deal with the same subject, but that would deal much more, uh, I guess, carefully, appropriately with mental health and depression. Um, and I can see that in here. Uh, we have a, a woman, um, Eleanor, who is going to uh, a, I think it's a national forest? or a state forest, I don't remember exactly, in New Hampshire. Um, that is just like the Japanese one. It's fictional, but basically people go there each year in, you know, alarmingly large numbers to kill themselves. And she is searching for her teenage son, who she is convinced has gone to this forest in order to do that. And she comes across some very odd things, uh, some supernatural beings, etc., in the forest. Um, it is, like I said, it is a quick read. It's just a little over 100 pages. Uh, there are I I was liking it. I mean, I, I like it. Let me just get that out of the way. I, I like this book. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't think that there were certain things that could have been maybe done a little bit better or that I would have preferred was done differently. Uh, we have some interesting scenarios in here. I do think that some of the scenes could have been drawn out a little bit more, uh, explored more. Um, the, the tension maybe uh, held, you know, sustained longer in some times. Uh, and then there is a twist in here, a large twist that I'm not going to give away, but you know, I, I co-host a horror movie discussion podcast called the horror cast, um, which all my videos, they're always linked below, uh, to that podcast. 
And I've been doing that for quite a few years now. And uh, one of the things that I brought up on that show is there is a certain horror trope, a certain horror twist that filmmakers use a lot, and I think way too much. And it's one that I'm just kind of tired of. Uh, and it happens in here. So when I saw it happening, I was like, oh no, like, um, couldn't we just go the path that we were going? Did we need the twist? Um, now it's fine. This is where the writer wanted to take it. So I went along for that journey and it was okay. Um, I don't know if I was 100% satisfied with, with it all at the end. Uh, but I do respect, um, uh, what this author was attempting I think that there were some really effective moments in here. Um, and overall, I, I would recommend it. Um, but, you know, again, not without those little, uh, those little qualifiers. Um, so those are just two things that I recently read. Uh, this is, I think, the last thing I read in April. And this is the first thing I read in May for uh, Horror Mayhem. If you read either of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right. As always, thank you, BookTube.